So, preliminary snapshot, bike gentlemen, and I'm kind of curious. So, they've got spies. By what I've seen on the, the ladder, it does look like a tier 1-ish deck. Maybe not as strong as some decks, but yeah, I would definitely give it like a, at least a 9 out of 10. And I'm kind of curious what the Gwendolyn guys think about it. It's very consistent, solid power curve in every round. I think it, it, was, it got actually a little bit hit with the weather changes because the Ragnarok and Wild Frost were an excellent card to include in this deck. And they provided power generation. And uh, those are the cards that you just cannot have in your deck uh, uh, as consistently anymore. And that's why I kind of opted to cut them out. I should do a 1 to 5 rating. Eh, I guess 1 to 10 is just more. Like, if I would do a 1 to 5, it would be like 4.5. Like, we would have 4.5 as well. Very strong, thinning tools and access to key cards. Strong finish combo. Yeah, yeah, it's a very consistent deck. At disadvantages, heavily reliant on emissary. How is that a disadvantage? Are you saying that... What? Like, if, if that was like heavily reliant on one particular card that's a gold, then like, if, if the disadvantage of the mill deck would be like heavily reliant on Avalok, I would, uh, okay, I would agree with that uh, disadvantage, but heavily ranked on Emissary? That's a bronze card, and you have three of them. And you keep killing some of them, and you just recover out more. I don't see how that's a disadvantage. Difficult to win if Imperial Enforcer Brigades are answered early. Forcers. Okay. Uh... Yeah, that's, that's actually, yeah, kind of, kind of true. But not many decks can uh, do that. <clears throat> Archetype explanation. I don't really need an explanation, but should I just read it just for the... Hey, do I agree with that? Uh, nah, I'm not gonna read that. I'm more of a picture guy, anyway. So anyway, this is the Atras, Emir Spies. This is the one I completely whooped. And he's running it with Emir, I'm pretty sure. Uh, is he? He has Von Hamari net for better counter. He, yeah, but he doesn't have first light in it. So it's basically like my oldish... What? Yeah, it's kind of like my old meta deck. The older meta deck, but he with Valas, Imperial Enforcer. Two more Imperial Brigades and no Clear Sky. That's that. And he has a, a Assyrian just for Roach. Uh, I guess that works. No Iris in the deck. I, I suppose. And uh, I don't know if I like Peter here. Why Peter? Like. Uh, oh, this, like, wait a second. Oh, yeah, he's running Emir. That's why he has Peter in there. But, like, if you're running Calvate, you just, like, uh, I mean, yeah, Calvate, then Kahir is a no brainer. So, the same golds uh, with uh, Vilga Forts, but uh, uh, Kahir instead. So, that makes more sense. The only advantage of uh, Emir is that you can replay uh, this one MR once. But on that, what do you want to replay? Like, Maybe, maybe that. Um, if that replaying like these like give you like marginal value, like okay, yeah, sure. Why not just play Cavate and that's fine. I think that works totally fine. So, anyhow, it's an okay list. Like it, it works. I, I suppose. I, I actually prefer much prefer the enforcers to the Imperial Brigades. Argument can be said that, you know, if you're just not killing heavily your spies, then maybe, like, the Imperial Brigades is more, uh, is safer. Because if you if you just have, like, five spies on the board, then you just stand on the Imperial Brigade and you got, like, 16 value. Uh, but uh, with the Imperial Enforcers, you get eight right away. 
but then you're gonna play the spies. Actually, you can uh, play the spies and you play it late, so you can just go with like emissary, emissary, imperial enforcer, and imperial enforcer gets affected by that. But the point is, you need to establish mo mo most of the spies after you play the <clears throat> the enforcer. And he actually got to a pretty high rank. I suppose I can't really argue against it. Like, you know, you can just like, you know, you just put this in my face like, We got to like 5,000 points on the pro ladder. What's up? What do you know about spies, mate? Um, okay, I guess. Looks like a decent list. Again, no better in it. Uh, or like some uh, spy lists in the previous meta. So that's that. You want to put back the emissaries in your deck? That's what you're pointing out? That's what you might want to do with uh, a seer? I suppose that could be an option because you're just like getting them out like all the time and you're just triggering your, the guys. But like a seer is, is not a great card to just uh, force a win. <clears throat> and uh, that's why I. Don't really like it. I guess Roach is fine in a, in a Emir deck, but like it's it's fine. But in a Calvary deck, you just cannot put him in because you're just dealing way too heavily already. So this is fine. I I guess I could just like uh, it's it's called preliminary preliminary for a reason. They didn't just say like, hey, this is like 9 out of 10. But yeah, this is a good deck and I did run into it. Okay, Mill Nerf Guard. I know about this a lot. Powerful engine was set up. Unique Brutal Wing Condition. Can you just... Okay, don't get me wrong. I love Brutal, but... Uh, isn't there a word here that's just more appropriate? Easily disrupted is if Avalak is lost. Heavily draw dependent. Well, I wouldn't call it heavily. Maybe moderately. Poor metas with inefficient deck training. Fair enough. <clears throat> I don't know if I should read this. Like, okay, let's just see that sample deck list, then I just decide if this is any good. Um, looks decent. The gold's that correct? Um, the bronzes are a little bit questionable. Not sure about that one. Seems more like a tech choice. It's sample like deck list of nobody apparently. Also spheres in it. Uh, Sarah. We have at least Sarah in it. And Stefan just for consistency. We got Hailstorm, which is okay in a long round. It looks decent. I would personally run it with soldiers because in my experience, like the Rotasers are just a little bit inconsistent. You don't know. Even in even in a long round, you just like you just run into a bunch of crap. Many times you just you just don't get the value from the Rotaser. And uh getting uh it from the soldier deck is just uh more reliable and you can at that point you can even cut the first light you can just go with the uh, soldier soldier and nausicaa uh, how's it called nausicaa standard bearer i believe the flag dude anyway and you can just go with like a full-on soldier deck <clears throat> so that works but i suppose if uh meta uh, if the meta doesn't have a uh, better in it like at all and you might want to consider this. And again, they, they, but if they're just spamming a lot of units, then Rotuses are really going to struggle to find value. And sometimes, like, I, I, I don't know. Like, it has, like, spheres in it. I would need to check out my list, but I'm pretty sure that this one is missing some the key units that may be uh, worth considering. It doesn't have Operator in it just to, like, really hammer in the nail, which is, I, I guess, fine. But operator can just uh, really make it happen. 
Anyhow, uh, Bill is uh, is decent. Like I do agree with that analysis, but we're not gonna like just run in and read their novel about it. I have my game wrong in the description, uh, but it, because I I kind of want to play Fortnite, but like we ended up analyzing the Grant thingy. Make sure to well, stream has been updated to Grant. Okay, fine. <sighs> then then we gotta play Fortnite. Damn it. Anyway, hybrid consume advantages. Incredibly synergistic bronze score that provides great tempo round one. Easy accessible carryover to prevent the opponent dry pass in round two. Okay. Like, it's a really strong deck. Disadvantages, terrible mulligans, making the deck inconsistent, weak lock effects. Or just like triggering the. Yeah, yeah. I kind of like. I want to see like the sample deck list. I think that would be that would have been more correct. If it was me, I would just put the sample deck list first. Like you know, like this is just like you say hybrid monsters, but what deck you're talking about? Like I do have some like I some image in my mind like what what hybrid monsters mean, and I have a pretty good guess what that means. But like you should just state what are you talking about here, then say what you think about it. Then explain it. In my opinion, like this should be the one that comes first, because uh, this says that weak to lock effects, and I was thinking like, what are you talking about here? Like the one is, ones I'm running into uh, many times do not have neckers, and or vrans. They're more like the Akimura version with uh, maybe some drowners. And uh, it does ma it does very much matter what art what uh, <clears throat> uh, type we are talking about here. So this is the hybrid consume. Yeah, this is actually weak. Also, it's weak to Peter and any uh, like also weak to Marvin because it just banishes the necker. And yeah, it's weak to lock. So it's not really much to say here. I look at it. Yeah, Foglet. And a lacerate, like a lot, a lot of tech and lacerates. But the deck is not that consistent. We have like four deck to ink, five. Um, and that's a six. So that's that. <clears throat> Actually, yeah, that's an eight if these get out, but they are like not really, you don't really want to get these out early. I suppose we just generate a lot of value with the brands. Not a lot, though. This deck is actually pretty weak to, for example, Frost. The eggs get popped easy. Or, or Rain. And any kind of effect that just shuts down the neckers or uh, locks the brands. Uh, as far as I know, this particular deck wasn't really that popular in the Grand Slam tourney. Uh, Monsters didn't change that much, so... I can tell you that uh, this deck is pretty easy to shut down. I guess it's not going to be that popular in attorney. And uh, the, the core looks okay. You have a little bit of a consume core in it. Like, it, it's a fine deck. I'm not really sure about the inclusion of Igni. I would, I would much rather see uh, a Royal Decree out for the Woodland Spread. But, yeah, that's about that. It's a good deck, but it can be shut down. And can be really strong. Yeah, that's not... Read that. Should I read that, guys? There would be no point, I was just reading it out loud. <clears throat> Erdin Control. Now, this is uh, something that I know about a lot. Again, we're gonna check out the sample deck list first. Uh, okay. I already don't like it. So, this version decided to have the warriors in it. Update this scorched in. Right. But, you. What? Why does it have to have a Vilga? What? Vilga and Uh. Yeah, I don't know. What is this deck? I've never seen this 
If I did, I'm 100% certain it would lose. I've never seen this deck on the ladder. I played against the top, top 250 guys, I played against the top 5 on the pro ladder. What is this deck? Ah, oh, thanks for the sub. <laughs> uh, did any of you see this deck? Because I feel like a little bit inadequate to talk about this. Like, it does look like you're just packing too much Scorch. Like, th these guys are just base 11, kind of, under the right, cir cir right circumstances. So, like, these are not amazing. Drown is obviously excellent. So, our Griffin... I suppose it's good if you're running up against Dagons because you don't care too much about uh, multi row better. You saw it one time and you won. That deck is really bad. Damn. Fucking, they don't do justice to the Vault Hunt. Because I know, like, the, the ship deck is, like, amazing. And why? That, actually, Vault Hunt doesn't have to screw around with the Scorch. You can just go, like, full out, full out Vault Hunt. Maybe that's like a bit of a boring way to do it, but it's true. And and also you can you wanna get out the navigators, you wanna play the navigators in your deck as many as you can, because that's just extra free points. Not only you're thinning your deck and just getting out your dudes, but also extra free points. And also it's even better with the with the ships, so uh, I don't know what this is supposed to be. Strong against large units? Because when you read that, like, you know, like I see like adding control, like hell yeah, Vault Hunt, and and advantages strong as large, <laughs> like without seeing the deck says strong against large units. Like what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I I would see I would need to see the deck first. Can put out surprising amount of points. Actually, it cannot put out surprising amount of points. More like can disrupt surprising amount of points, but. It really cannot put out surprising amount of points. I'm pretty su would be surprised if we would get uh, a lot of points here on our board. We could burn surprising amount of points. I would be pretty surprised. But I would be surprised if we had a lot of points on our board. Vulnerable to swarm. That is true. Vulnerable to locks and control. Or just anything. Anything that has value, that just not about just putting all the value in, in like one dude. So I suppose this is the ultimate counter to the uh, Unseen Elder. So, that's that. I don't know, I, I just don't see, well, it looks like a tech choice, but like I just don't see this, the need for this. Why would you... Why? I really hope we have another Erdin deck as well. Because this is a disgrace. This doesn't do Erdin justice. There, there are like at least two or three archetypes of Erdin out there. <clears throat> I run the full-on Vault Hunt. But I know the Drowner version. Maybe even with the Fro Frost Giants as a, as a thing too. Or just some people run it with the Drowners and the... Vault Hunt guys, but like don't go like overboard with the Scorch, maybe uh, the, with the burn effects, maybe like one Scorch, but why would the fuck would you run Igni and Villain to the as well? I don't get that. Spell of Toil. Ah, that hardly needs an introduction. But I just see the deck list. Yep. 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 Yeah. Actually, I'm not sure if I like this. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's a lot worse now. I'm pretty. I don't like this because uh, with the clear sky changes, these things can get shut down pretty easy. And uh, would you take that chance? Why not just go for? I don't know. Royal decree resurrect, something like that, or maybe the other spellcasters. But like, do you really want to put your faith on a golden vetter? In this meta, because if you just, for example, you play a Ragnarok on the, on the guys, and they are like wounded, maybe not that wounded, but let's just say like lacerated, but it, even that, that doesn't matter. Because you play for six, and they just play that clear sky, it was a minus three, they traded your uh, gold card for a, a minus three bronze card. Terrible trade. 
So, of course, if this gets out of control, it's it's really good. But, like, it's a massive gamble. And I don't feel like this uh, deck needs to, like, just uh, uh, rely on a massive gamble. What do you guys think about this uh, gold veteran inclusion, inclusion in this deck? I know in the past it made more sense. Actually, somewhat less sense because it doesn't really have movers in it. I was I was on the edge of like, yeah, okay, fine, you can put it in. But now, does it really make sense? I don't know. I'm not convinced about this. Everything else looks standard, but the but the golden values are questionable. I'd rather see again, uh, resurrect or any anything basically. Are not so weak. The thing is, like these are uh, the golden value didn't get any weaker. But, uh, but like, the, the counter just got, got stronger, and uh, you, you just gotta watch out. That is all. <clears throat> Everything else looks fine to me. Yeah, there's not much to say about that. Mm. Okay, I just not read about that. Because... Yeah, whatever. You can just run other golds. That makes more sense. Even like, uh, um, damn it, Zoltan, Zoltan, the movie guy, would be a good good one as well. Because you you want to hailstorm them. That that works. It's worth giving up like one spell slot for him, or maybe just the uh, renew, or I don't know. Like that just works. The deck doesn't turn like that heavily, so you can just put that in. Okay, movement squatel. Okay, let's see what deck are we talking about. Uh, it seems a pretty simplified version. I wouldn't mind seeing some first lights in it. Or... Am I wrong? I'm pretty sure that you... You can? Yeah. You, you definitely can get away with some first lights. I'm not sh sure why would you have this. If you can just put in the first lights. And just cut away from uh, some of this. And uh, drought. Again, I'm not sold on the golden weather, but again, this, the, the idea here is just to move them, cast on them, and we are running eight knee for sure. And I guess, yeah, whatever. Not, not a huge fan of Sarah. Or I guess that just another mover. It's just a bit ver weirder version and, I suppose, less prepared version of the ones that I've, I've seen. Drought, again, don't like it. If your opponent has a clear sky, it's a terrible trait for you. And you have no other weather. And, uh, yeah, so... Why would you bother? Because if your opponent has a clear sky, he's, he's gonna hold on to it and just you're just gonna get completely crushed. Anyhow, Queen's Guard. Let's see. Simple to play. Great counter to spot removal. Okay. Difficult to outtempo in rounds 2 or 3. Vulnerable to graveyard hate. Somewhat draw dependent. Well, they can just say, like, hopelessly destroyed by everything. Nah, that, that, that doesn't really cover it. Like, if anybody plays Monster or Neofgard, don't play this deck. Or, yeah, basically it. Or, but yeah, that's basically it. In other, any other cases, you can maybe consider it. There's not much to say. Oh my god, this is the greediest version I've ever seen. He actually has uh, the Hammer Dudes to buff the Queen's Guard further. <gasps> Man! Are you kidding me? Yeah. And not these. Not not the dudes. It's just all about the Queen's Guard. This is the biggest all in deck I've ever seen. It's pr I'm pretty sure that this deck would get too old for sure. 100%. Oh my god. 
greediest deck of all time. I don't know what's the win condition here. Open pass, your opponent, your opponent open uh, passes twice, and you're just like, hell yeah, I won the game, or just presses like escape. I don't see this deck winning. It's way too easy to shut down. But even if not, the power level is so low, and it's all about yeah. You know, I, I'm gonna give it to you. If if you don't lose horribly. In the first two rounds, you might win round three. But, uh, I don't know. This is so bad. Like, look at this. The ship is in the deck just for the Queen's Guard. Holy crap. I, I, I do see this ship in, like, the Great Sword deck, but come on. Ship. Just in a Queen's Guard deck. Okay, I don't think so. If on on whatever scale, on, on a one to ten scale, this deck gets a zero. This deck gets a seven. This deck gets a well, because of the golden vetters, I, I guess I'm gonna give it a seven. Adding control gets a five. Hybrid consume. Uh, I guess this was the most uh. Most sensible out of all, the, all of them. I don't think it's like quite the meta. Kind of a little bit easy to shut down. I would give this an 8. Male nerf guard. Uh, yeah, I, I do think this is uh, the slightly inefficient version of it. But not too bad. I would give this an 8 as well. Nerf guard spies. Uh, that's actually a pretty sensible list. Seen this in work. Lost, like, yeah, whatever. I'm, I'm giving this that an 8 as well. Maybe just my personal preference, because I just didn't see it in action. But, like, yeah, this looks like an 8-ish to me. Like, looks like we started good. Like, started strong. 8, 8, 8, 5, 7, 7, uh, 0. Restore Skerriga. Let's see. <clears throat> Let's see what deck we got here. By the way, is it big enough for you guys? Should I make it bigger? The wind condition is a disconnect. Yeah, I figured that one out. But should I make it bigger? Is it big enough? Anyhow, uh, Sveem's Restore Skerriga. Actually, I did face that, and it's a pretty strong deck. Uh, yeah. I knew the pieces. I faced it. And it was a hard deck to uh, defy, it, frankly. And uh, I have to give this deck uh, at least a 9. So, yeah. What can I say? <clears throat> it's a 9. Strong carryover options. Yeah. Very strong short rounds. Um, nah. Strong short rounds. I would agree with that. Resistant to being bled. Mm. Okay. Vulnerable to massive tempo swings in round 2. Somewhat awkward mulligans. Um, I don't know. It looks like a decent deck. <clears throat> I fought it. It was it was decent. Fault to Swarm. Versatile game plan. High point plays in most cards. Very dangerous mulligans. Oh shit. I'm just I'm just like for a second like holy shit, did they like copy my deck? But no. This is actually this deck is actually uh, a bit we weirder. Okay, so why those? I suppose with the potions. Um, why the witchers? Why do you? You know you're just being greedy now. Like, why? why? Why would you have these? Like, I don't get it. Like, I, I really have no idea. How much you get for them? Isn't it like a 11, 18? I think, I think you get like 18 for them. It looks like 5, 6, 7. So you get 18 for them. But what's the point? It's just not worth it. 
Like, why would you run the Witchers? Like, you don't have to run all the Mulligan options just because, like, Hey, what's up? I'm a Mulligan deck. I'm gonna, like, run all the guys that need to be Mulliganed away. But not Wes. Like, I don't see Vess anywhere. Like, do I need to check my eyesight? No. It's like, did not... No Vess. Why not Vess? My deck, my version of it, has less stuff to mulligan away and has Vess in it. Who, who can uh, mulligan two cards. And many times three cards. Which is in a deck. Portions with Ashila. Like, at this point, we're just talking about decks that, you know, you might just make and just realize that, you know, this is not even, not even good for just to take it to casual as a joke. Like, you know, you would just feel bad about it. And like, you know, you know, I would give this deck a, hey, come on. Are you kidding me? Not that Fortis the Swarm deck is, is uh, hopeless, but uh, why? Why that version? Should I just uh, fire up some music because it's uh, getting uh, a bit tricky here? Like, I don't know. I just... The silence. Silence is getting to me. hand sold combo. Advantages. High tempo. Strong long rounds. Uh, vulnerable to spot removal. And big short rounds. Okay. What are we talking about here? Oh, yeah. Makes sense. I, I, I suppose that is what we are talking about here. Um, yep. Where's the last bronze? Actually, it has uh, 17 bronzes in it. With these guys buffing everything, plus giving these uh, siege machines uh, crewmen. And this puts back the siege machines. Maybe. And everything else looks like okay. Yeah, this is uh, good against uh, decks that uh, have a lot of uh, identical units. We can just like set up the uh, set up something. the The main problem I got with this deck is that uh, many times the Hansel need to overinvest in round one. Uh, many times what happens is that he plays the Cadvany Seed support with the hand sword. And that is basically one of the combos that, uh, unless you have a very specific answer, you just need to pass and let the hand sword have it. But at that point, he has like three uh, Cadvanys in the graveyard. He can resurrect one of them. Or, and uh, there's not much he can do. Like, he can put them back, but like, I, I think that's, that's the plan. Just put back the Cadvanys. Then maybe he relies on like getting out the quad Venice with the review scouts just just to like because these guys just completely suck without the cat Venice cat Venice C supports so I personally find this a little bit one trick pony because if we take out the cat Venice this doesn't make sense uh, this doesn't work so well or it works uh, less well and uh, I suppose these they all have an okay. Uh, time with each other, but it, it's gonna be uh, less valuable. Oh, actually, no, 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 no. Actually, we can get out the cat venice, but actually, that's that's just a gamble again. I don't know. Would be, I I could see this deck working, but in the the right opponent can play around it, and uh, those uh, even if you get out the. The guys a second time, they might just get locked or whatever. And without the seed supports, it's gonna be a tricky one. So, that's that. Nothing else uh, left to check out. So this is the pre preliminary snapshot. It was a bag of uh, many, many decks. Go with the Queen's Guard, that's the best, guys. Guaranteed. 100%. Easy wins, all the time. Anyway, that's that.